Hey, welcome to another super exciting After Effects animation tutorial. Today, we are animating this comic book panel here. We're gonna put some motion in here and some movement for maybe uh, maybe it's a comic book trailer, maybe it's a full motion comic. If you're interested in doing that sort of thing, you have come to the right place. Uh, look at this, what we're gonna do is this right here. We've got some pretty basic motion. It's just sort of a, a camera move. The arm is moving. We got some effects on the glasses there. So this is what we're gonna animate. We're gonna do this entirely in After Effects. So normally I would animate this. I would put this in Photoshop. I drag this image into Photoshop and I'd cut everything up and I'd redraw the background. But we're gonna do a, a just a down and dirty, super fast, super quick uh, uh, After Effects version where we're not using anything but After Effects. And we're gonna do all of this with just masking and uh, and cameras and all the built-in stuff that's right inside After Effects. So no need to go anywhere else. So here we go, we're gonna start by importing an image. You go to import and then file, you, you select that and then you're gonna to navigate to wherever your file is. If you don't have something, um, I'll tell you what, I'll even give you this image. You can cut this up if you want. I'll put, the, I'll put a link down there in the description. You can take this and uh, work with this. Maybe I'll put the project files, who knows? I, I don't know what I'm gonna do. It's, uh, there's no limits to what I could do here. Um, except there are some limits to reality. You could also uh, just Google anything. Uh, if you've heard of this, uh, this new uh, site called Google where you can just find anything, use that. You can just find a new image, whatever you like, anything, just for just to get some practice. Again, this is all just to give you some inspiration, to give you some practice, uh, let you create your own fun stuff. So you can import your own image. I've already got this right in here. Here's my image, it's called Gruck the Slayer. It's from my own personal comic book called Maximus Blade. You should check that out, there'll be a link below. And we're gonna drag this right into this icon here. This is the composition maker icon. So you drag your image right in there and boom, it, it creates a new composition right here that's the exact same size as your image. And uh, this one's a minute long and that's a bit long for me. I'm gonna go down to about seven or eight seconds trim comp. And now I've got my, my image here. So sometimes what I'll do is I'll just hit duplicate, control D a couple times. So I have a couple copies in there ready to go. I probably won't use all of those. I'm gonna start with this. And uh, the first thing I guess I'll do is uh, I'm gonna mask off uh, the character here. Um, we'll start by doing that. And I'll, I'll use the pen tool up here. If I have a layer selected, that's a, that's a mask tool. And I'm gonna mask him off, but then I'm also gonna mask his arm out separately. And, uh, and so this is sort of a process, if you're not familiar with using the, uh, the pen tool, take a, a minute, you know, this is a good practice. I'm zooming in and uh, using the space bar, I can move this around, right? I, I use my scroll wheel to zoom in or out, and then my, uh, um, my space bar to move the image around here. So I can zoom in and I can get detailed work. And what's great is that while I'm masking, if I'm going down here, I can also move up and then I can get some more details there. Undo, 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 right? So we're gonna bring this back here and I'm just gonna start masking off just his arm for right now. And you get uh, as detailed, this is half resolution, let's go full resolution. And you get as detailed as you like. You know, you can go real quick or you can go slow and get all the details here. But this is a good opportunity to practice using the pen tool. Right now, I'm just kind of clicking. But if I hold it down, I kind of make these, these loops, uh, Bezier curves, I think they call them there. Okay, so now we've got our arm layer masked off. Go back to my selection tool. I'm gonna deselect the layer. So this is my arm right here. Now I'm gonna, the uh, best thing to do right now, rename this before I get a bunch of layers created. And uh, we'll call this arm. Uh, I'll put that up on the top here and open up, uh, unhide another layer. And now I'm gonna mask off the character himself. Stand by for some more uh, really fast motion. Uh, 
So we've got all of the character masked off, essentially. Again, it's up to you how much detail you want to put into this. But this one little section right in here, we're going to want to mask this as well. Um, and when I, you can see when I complete masking it right here, uh, I just need to hit mask M to open up mask. And then this particular one, I'm going to turn it into a subtraction mask. So I just go hit subtract and I'll subtract that area too. So you just need to let After Effects know if you're going to add or subtract that area. So now our guy is all masked off here and we have our character and we have his arm. And sometimes what I like to do, I'm going to rename this to just call it Gruck because that's his name and drag this up. But I'm going to pin or parent the arm to the character. This way, if I do move the character, which I don't plan to, but if I do, the arm goes with it. I'm also going to move the anchor point. So I select the arm layer, hit Y to get the, uh, the rotation tool here. And I'm going to put it right down there. And now you can see if I hit R and open up the rotation property, now it kind of rotates a little bit. Now, if I go too far, that's, that's crazy. Now you could redraw this area in here if you really want that, but I'm just going to have a little bit of motion here with Gruck. So now we need to work on the background because as you can see, when the character moves, he's still there. So we need to mask off or uh, really redraw this background. So I have this background layer selected. Again, if I did this in Photoshop, uh, that may be the best way to do it. But After Effects also includes a few tools. You could uh, you could maybe rotoscope this. That's uh, one way to, there's a lot of different ways to do it. Uh, right now, we're gonna go real simple. I'm gonna hit this clone stamp tool. And I'm just gonna do a real quick mask. Cause the thing is, I'm gonna blur this out. So we double click on the layer. And uh, that opens this up over here, way over here. I don't know why it's over there. Maybe I was doing that earlier. So I'm gonna open up the layer itself. This is not the composition, this is just the layer. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna kinda clone stamp sections of the background. So let's go to my, uh, my clone stamp tool. Where's that? Here it is. So this'll be my brush sizes. So I could do very small, and I'm gonna to wanna to adjust maybe the uh, the hardness is gonna be very, if you look here, it's gonna be very rough. I'm like a very feathered brush. That's what I want. And if you hit Alt, that's your target. That's the area that you're gonna pick from. And then if I go over here and I just click, it starts to clean up and erase almost. See, what it's doing is just replacing this area with this area. and you may find that sometimes you get a weird thing here. See, it's drawing that building, and I don't want that. So control Z, control Z, until that kind of goes away. Select this area again, and it's not gonna be super perfect, but if you really work at it, you can get it to be somewhat believable. See, he's starting to just disappear from existence. Now, you know, sometimes you could argue that this is you know, maybe you're really messing with the integrity of the of the image here, and maybe you are. I don't know. That's up for you, up to you to. It's up to you to decide if that's true. Okay, so here's our image here, and you can see it's not it's not exactly perfect. But uh, let's go back to our our comp layer, and we'll put our character back in. We'll put the arm back in here, and I think it covers up enough that you won't really notice. Now, some of these, you know, you could clean these up a little bit more, but I just want to kind of show you the technique here. So practice with the uh, with the clone tool, and uh, and you'll definitely get better and better at it. Now, what happened is when I started using it, I started uh, at about, uh, you know, a little ways in, a few frames in. So if you do that, that's okay. I'm just gonna drag this back so it starts there because you can actually keyframe the motion of this clone tool. And apparently I used 162 clones. Isn't that fun? Now we have our character and when we uh, hit that rotation tool, it almost, you know, is almost seamless here. His uh, arm rotation. So now let's get to motion. Let's turn on 3D for all of our layers. And turns out we didn't need that far, far background layer. So we've only got these here. We could delete that. And uh, 
We may need it actually in a little bit, but that's okay. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna add layer, new camera. We've got a camera. We're gonna use the default settings because they're nice and simple. And we wanna have the camera kind of zoom in on his face. So I need to put some distance. I need to position these things. Arm and, and character are gonna be on the same uh, position in Z space, but this one I'm gonna hit P, open up position, and because I've got it in 3D, it gives me this third, this is the Z position, and as I push that back, it starts to go way back there. I'm gonna put it back maybe 2,000, right? It's way back there. Now because it's back, it gets smaller, hit S, and we'll scale it back up to the original size or close enough, so now, if I go to my camera layer, I can adjust the position right here through camera position. I could move that around, right? I could adjust the point of interest, but what I'm gonna do is use the camera tool. I can go up here and select the camera tool or I can hit C. And as if I keep hitting C, I scroll through the camera um, tools. This is the zoom in tool and that's what we're gonna use. And you can see it sort of creates almost a little bit of motion, and there feels like there's some depth in there, right? Oh, we see his background. Well, we're not going there, so we might have to adjust that, but let's zoom in and then hit camera again, and then we'll have it sort of zoom in, maybe right up to his face. And if we need to cover something up, we will, but that's where we're gonna end up. Okay, so let's keyframe that. So turn those to keyframe the, uh, the point of interest and position, and I'll zoom back out to where I was, and whoops, and get this camera icon, put it right about there. Might have to zoom in a little bit. So now I have a keyframed motion that starts and moves in. That moves in pretty quick. I'm actually drag this out to about four seconds, hit F9 to turn on keyframe easing. And so he zooms in just like that. But I see there's a little bit of, you know, you can see his jacket right there behind him. You know what I'll do to fix that is I can actually hit this layer and maybe I'll just move it down a little bit and that'll hide it. Now I can certainly go back and clean that up if I want to really, again, just trying to show some techniques here. So our camera zooms in onto the character. Now we'll select the arm layer, hit rotation, and we're going to uh, keyframe this turn on orientation and we'll actually have it end here and then maybe and we'll go back drag this keyframe to the beginning and he sort of moves his gun arm move this up I'll ease that with F9 and now he sort of moves his gun into position and we've got this little area back there you know what we can do is we can just slide the entire layer and cover that up. Whoops, that doesn't look great over there. So I can see a little bit right here on the edge that I want to clean up. And I'll do that right here. And now, have him move forward. We'll move the arm over slightly, just a little bit. Just drag it a little to the left few tweaks so I like that let's go fit to screen okay once you have this tweak to where you like it now we're gonna select all layers close everything and we also want to add a little shine to the glasses here and what I'll do is I'll take the uh, character layer duplicate that hit M and I'm gonna actually turn off both of these masks and I'm gonna go back to my pen tool zoom in and I'm just gonna mask off the glasses layer here. And great, once you have that done, uh, if you wanna solo it, this little button here solos the layer, so I can see that's all I want is those, uh, the shiny glass part of his glasses, and I'll unsolo it, we'll zoom back out. And now I'm gonna put, let's, uh, let's name this glasses so I know don't lose track. Now I'm going to put an effect on here, and I'm going to use a uh, light sweep. There it is. Double click, and that adds this sort of light sweep effect. And this it creates this little uh, dragger tool here, and it's real simple to use. I just put it right here where I want it to start. Let's open up the uh, 
effects. So I'm gonna have it start right here. I'll zoom in a little so you can see what I'm doing. And it's gonna just drag across and create that little light. So again, we start there. And uh, if you hit that stopwatch up there, and then uh, hit E, that opens up effects. And there it is, the stopwatch. You could hit it there or there, same thing. A lot of different ways to do the same thing here. But we'll keyframe that so it starts there. And then our center point, hit this if you don't see that little target arrow thing. And we'll drag it across there. So now the keyframe is right there, maybe a little slower. And so we have a little bit of light. You can tweak the, uh, you know, the settings in here if you want to make it uh, thicker or, or thinner or more intense. You know, we'll turn the intensity up just for fun. And uh, now we have this sort of almost like a, uh, you know, a sweep of light. The light goes across his glasses as the camera moves in. And the last effect that we'll add here, which will kind of add a little bit more finishing touch here. I do see his arm in the background. Um, sure, I could move him all the way over there. Okay, and I do see his arm there in the background just a little bit. So I could go back and, you know, mask that out, clone stamp again, clean that. Um, but again, this is just to give you an idea. In fact, one thing I could do is I could scale him up. I got to make sure, first of all, that the glasses layer is parented to him. So I could scale him up maybe just a touch, maybe move him over and uh, maybe move him down. And that should that should hide any of that stuff that we see back there. Again, down and dirty, trying to do this real quick. Last thing, last effect I'm going to add here is going to be a blur, my favorite effect Gaussian blur we add that to the background and here's what we're gonna do is we're going to turn on the blurriness keyframe right there and then we're gonna move all the way to about here and we're gonna make it way blurry and I feel like that sort of almost adds like this uh... so now we have sort of a blur here but I'm gonna hit uh, U, open up the keyframes here and uh, we'll actually start it kind of blurry already so it's a little bit like it's you know the camera's focused on him in the foreground and as we zoom in we see sort of this blur gets a little bit blurrier so there you have it that's a quick way to do a uh, sort of animated comic panel a um, million other things we could do here. We could add all kinds of smoke and effects and, and uh, particles, but this is just a very simple intro to motion comics. In fact, that's what I'll call the video, Intro to Motion Comics. Plenty more of these motion comic videos to come, so check back. Thanks a lot.